Hello everyone, my name is Cam Bergeron and I'm an exercise physiologist. Today we're going to be doing a class called Tayoba. So we'll be in the chair and a little bit of balance work behind the chair today. So remember, if anything doesn't feel right for your body, sit that exercise out. If you need a break, take a break whenever you want. Never work through any pain in this class or any other classes that you take. So starting off, let's have everybody chest up nice and tall, shoulders back in that chair arms right by your sides. Now, what I'd like you to do from here is breathe out, bring arms up, come away from your backrest. Breathe in, draw it back. So breathe out, come on up tall. Breathe in, bring it back. Make sure as you're coming up, you're not rounding forwards. That is key. You wanna just keep your chest up and use your hips to pivot as you bring those arms up. Breathing out and in, abs tight. and only going to shoulder height. You don't have to go any higher than that. Two more. And very nice. So now keeping you all the way back in your chair, arms up, just like so. Now what you're gonna do from there, a little bit of a funky motion is breathe out, hands up, together, draw them all the way around, back in and back to your chair. So once again, we're working away from your chair and then coming back. So it's breathe out, bring them up, round them in, pivot back. So once again, no arching back as they come up here. And as you come back into your chair, make sure you're not rounding into it. Actually throw those shoulders back. So breathe out, bring it around, breathe in, bring it back. And just take it nice and easy, really just working off the pivot in your hips. No rounding of the back. Four more. And last one. And very nice. So now from there, let's go chest up, left leg out, right hand reaches towards left foot, drop it down, alternate sides. Chest up, pivoting forwards at the hips. Biggest thing here is not rounding your back like this. It really doesn't matter how far you reach, so you should not look like this. It's all about keeping chest up tall to get that nice mild discomfort stretch behind the leg. Breathing out as you pivot forward. If you can touch the toe without rounding out, that's cool. But don't round in order to actually try to touch the toe. That's not that important. And we're going two, two, one, and very nice. So now with the legs loosened up a little bit, scoot forwards on your chair. Chest up, shoulders back. Now, legs out straight toes up. Now automatically you're going to want to fall into this collapse pattern. Make sure you avoid that. So chest up, shoulders back, hold up nice and tall. You may even get stretching behind your legs again. And then from there what I want you to do is actually round out, bend your knees in, and then breathe out, feet out, chest up tall, shoulders back, and then bring it in. It's going to be easier to slide the feet in, so you may have to step, step as you come out and come up tall. Don't just throw yourself down though. You wanna collapse nice and controlled and then come on up nice and tall and you can exaggerate your motion. If you arch your back a little bit as you come up and bring your shoulders back, I'm completely fine with it. Two more. And last one, you're going to hold your tall position. So hold chest up, shoulders back. Make sure your shoulders aren't driving up. Keep them down, palms facing forwards. 10 seconds just holding your posture. Four, three, two, and come on out. So now from there, we're gonna go right into some balancing. So toes straight, feet flat, chest up, breathe out, stand up, and now come behind your chair for me. Now, biggest thing when it comes to your chair is chair safety. Always push straight down into your chair. That way it stays nice and stable. Don't push forwards and definitely don't pull back, especially if you need it, just push 
down. That is the key to using the chair. So now you will be facing your chair just like so. I'm going to go sideways. That way you can see a little bit better. So from this sideways position, what I'd like you to do is toes straight, feet flat. Breathe out and come up on your tippy toes as high as possible. Breathe in, bring it back down. So now I'm not doing this exercise to work your calves. I'm doing this to work your balance. So as you come up nice and slow, maybe try to let some fingers off and then bring it down. So breathe out, bring it up. Trying to use as little fingers and hands as you can. Breathe in, bring it down. If you want to test the balance but you feel a little sketched out, easiest way to do it is use your fingers on the way up, but then let them go and decel down nice and slow. And you can use your fingers on the way up and down nice and slow. If you get comfortable and you think you can bring it up and not touch, go for it. But you may feel a little sketchy. I would rather have you touch and go all the way up rather than not touch and maybe just do a little half rep like this. And these reps should definitely not be like this. Not fast reps. It's going to throw your balance off. Just nice and easy. And then back down. We have two more. And very nice. So those calves are probably feeling a little crampy. If you want to just give them a little shake, shake them out real quick. Now, from there, left leg is forwards. Right leg is backwards. This is one of those times you want to make sure you're not pulling that chair back to you. So now, from this elongated position, what you're going to do is dip your back knee. And we're going to hold it. So I don't care how low you go. Just make sure both toes are straight forward. You don't want that back leg pointing out to the right. So both feet, toes pointing straight forward. Dip down as low as you feel comfortable. If you need your chair, just don't do this. Keep chest up and hold like this. If you get comfortable, take a hand off maybe some fingers off. You can use one finger on each, whatever you like. If you get real comfortable and you want to dip down lower, dip down lower. If you feel like the legs are jamming up, then draw the leg backwards more and then dip down. And that should help a lot. We have about 10 seconds left. Do what you can. Three, two, and step on forward. So now let's do that same thing with the opposite side. Right leg forward, left leg back. Make sure both feet are facing straight forwards. Now, holding on to that chair, you can dip down at that back knee, keeping that front foot flat, and hold. If that's good for you, stay right there. If you need your chair, that's fine. If you get comfortable, let some hands off, some fingers off. Remember, if your legs just feel cramped, then draw it back more. And then go for your dip down, and that should help. So 12 seconds left, chest up, shoulders back. No being in like this. Five, four, three, two, and step on out. So you might feel that right in those quads. Once again, if you need to shake it out, shake it out. Now, going into a tandem stance. So left leg in front of right, heel to toe. Now, what I'd like you to do from here is however big your foot is, that's the distance I would like in between your front left heel and your back right toes. So take that foot and bring it back about roughly a foot distance. Now, both feet are flat. Your back heel should not be up. Even pressure into both feet. Bend into your front knee to stabilize because your back leg's going to want to take all of it. Chest up, shoulders back, and balance. Look in front of you at a non-moving point, whatever that is. If you need both hands on that chair, use it. If you want to take some hands off, some fingers off, do what you can. But if you get sketchy, leave them right here. Abs should be tight. If you're wobbly, that's actually good. If you're stationary and you're holding with two hands, definitely let some fingers off. You want to challenge yourself, but stay safe. 10 seconds left. Three, two, and step on out. So now from there, we can do that same thing, but switching sides. So it's right leg in front of left, heel to toe. Now slide that left leg straight back so it's about a foot distance in between your front right heel, your back left toes. Make sure your left heel is on the ground. Bend into that front knee so that front leg takes some weight. Chest up, shoulders back, abs tight. Stand up nice and tall and focus on your non-moving point.
12 seconds. Four, three, two, and step on out. All right, so shake out those legs and let's bring you down into the chair. Let's take a little load off those feet. So come on down, but once you get to the front of your chair, sit down properly. Don't just grab the chair and try to sit down like that. This actually will be true for any time you go to sit down. Make sure you don't just come down and try to sit like this. My suggestion is stand right in front of that chair. Look at it, make sure it's a good position for you. Toes straight, feet flat, chest up. You can bring your arms out, it makes it easier. And then you can just decel down nice into your chair. So the more you do that without having to use your hands and twisting, the better it's gonna be. You're gonna get more function into that leg and just sitting and standing is going to be a lot easier, which is actually what we're gonna go into next. So sit yourself in a comfortable position. Toes straight, feet flat, chest up, arms by your sides. Or if you need them, arms can be out forwards. I'll demo with both. Now, breathe out, stand up, squeeze the butt, release, bring it back down. Now your goal here is to not round up like this and then also not round back into it. Focus in front of you, straight ahead or slightly upwards will help. Sometimes I like saying, depending on the height of your ceilings, look at the point where the wall meets the ceiling. That little connection point is a very good spot to look if you're having trouble and you're rounding out like this. We just have two more. Watch those knees, make sure they're not diving in. You wanna keep those knees nice and parallel. And very nice. Okay, so now scooting all the way back in your chair. What I'd like you to do from there is bring your right ankle on your left knee. This one's gonna take a little bit, so don't worry about it. Go nice and easy, and this is all about hip mobility here. So, left hand supports your right ankle. Chest up, right knee moves across body to left armpit. You're gonna get to a point where it stops, it just bottoms out. Take your right hand and pull that right knee towards your left armpit. You're gonna get a little stretch in that right hip. Now let it go and push down with only your muscles. I do not want your hand on there, put your hand up. And then bring it all the way across, let it bottom out. Then pull, let it go, push down. So that pull is really just to get a mild discomfort stretch in that right leg, right hip. What I don't want you to do is fluidly go in and pull. I want this to be a choppy motion. So it's one across, two pull, three let go, four push down with your muscles. You may actually get another stretch in the inner thigh. So across, bottoms out, then push for your stretch, let it go, push down. Don't even just leave your hand on there because whether you know it or not, if you just leave your hand there, you're gonna use it. So make sure that hand comes off each time in order to really work that leg as it should. Three more. Make sure chest is up, shoulders are back. You don't wanna be rounding into it like this. Last one. And very nice. And so now slowly bring that right leg down. Now we're gonna switch sides. Left ankle on right knee. Now hold that left ankle with your right hand. Chest up, shoulders back. Now, left knee goes across body until it bottoms out. Once it bottoms out, take that left hand, and pull it. So you get a little stretch in that left leg, left hip, let it go, hand completely off, and then push down with your muscles only. Breathe out, bring it across, let it stop, and pull. Breathe in, push down. Make sure you're not rounding into it as you do this. Keep chest up, shoulders back into that chair. And just keep going nice and easy, really making sure you take that hand off each time. Very adamant on that. Want that leg to learn range of motion. Four more. Last two. And very nice. So slowly bring that leg down. Now sit up nice and tall, 
feet flat. What we're going to do here is mess around with your sit to stands a little bit and show you what basis support does. So instead of being normal standing distance like you were the first time, bring those feet together as close together as you can get, thighs as close together as you can get. Now, if you physically can't stand up with this stance, you're going to slightly make your stance wider. So you can stand with the narrowest stance possible for you. But if you can do it with those feet, knees, and thighs together, let's go for it. So chest up. I'd say start with your arms out because it'll be a little bit easier. Breathe out, stand up, squeeze the butt, release, bring it back down. So this is one where you're going to want to be linear because having a narrow stance, you're going to feel wobbly at the hips as you come up. And especially on the way down, your hips are going to kind of wobble side to side and you're going to favor one leg over the other. Make sure you're linear, straight up together straight down together, focusing right in front of you or looking slightly upwards if you feel like you're rounding out. But like I said, if you can't do it, slightly widen that stance and go for the narrowest stance possible for you. Three more. Arms just down is easier. And very nice work there. Okay, so what I'd like you to do from there is grab your ball, chest up tall, using your shoulders, so not your lower back. That's key with this type of exercise. Bring one shoulder to the side, opposite shoulder to the side. So as you go to the left, really bring that left shoulder backwards and try to draw that right shoulder forwards. And then you should get a little stretching feel in that upper back. Make sure you're not caving into this one. It should be up nice and tall. Breathing out at each side point. Breathing in as you bypass through the middle. Let your head follow and have good feet posture. You don't want to be sitting here with your legs curled, crossed, or anything like that. Keep feet flat, toes straight. We have three, three, one more each, and very nice. All right, so we can go for round two of balancing toes straight, feet flat, chest up, breathe out, stand up, and now come behind your chair once again. Now for this one, what I'd like you to do is bring the chair to the left side of your body. Now depending on what you have to work with, where your screen is, you could just move your body. You don't have to move the chair. So you could just spin one way into the other. But I would like you to position yourself so the chair is right to the left side of you. Now what we're going to do from here is keeping a little bend in your left knee. Right leg is going to bend back and then it's going to kick forwards. And I'll show you from the sideways position in a second. So right leg bends back. As you can see, as I bend, my knees are parallel. And then as I kick, my right knee is in front. You don't want to bend it and keep that knee in front. So from the side view, it looks just like this. Curl and kick, making sure you're not rounding or arching back. So you can breathe out as you kick, breathe in as you bend and bring it back. Now up to you. If you feel comfortable to let some fingers go off of that chair, let some fingers go. Maybe let the hand go, but keep it right there so you can work on that balance. And focus in front of you on your non-moving point. Keeping chest up, shoulders back. We still have about another 20 seconds. This is a long one. Ten, nine, three, two, and come on out. All right, drop out of there. Shake out that leg if you need. Now, you're staying right in that same position. What we're going to do is keep a little bend in that left knee. Left toe is straight. Now, right leg out forwards. I don't care how far it is, how high it is. Just make sure you're not rounding into it. Chest up, shoulders back, right leg out, right toes up. Now squeeze the butt, belly button in, chest up, shoulders back. Focus in front of you on your non-moving point. If you get comfortable, let some fingers off. Let a hand off, 
but it's all up to you. Stay safe. But challenge yourself. You don't want to be just like a statue gripping on very well. If you feel very, very stable with one hand, let a finger or two off. Or maybe just hold it with your thumb or your pointer. Whatever you think. We have 10 seconds left. Three, two, and drop it down. Shake out that left leg. I know that hip's probably feeling a little bit. Now we're going to do the opposite. So on this one, if you get a cramping in your hamstring, which you may if you're tight, then just stop, extend it out, pivot forward, don't round. So pivot forward, hold a stretch for a second or two, come out of it. That will alleviate that cramping and then just get right back into it. You may not experience that though. So a little bend in your left knee, left foot straight, right leg heel to butt. Make sure the knee is not forwards. Right knee should be right alongside of left knee. So squeeze the butt. Belly button in, chest up, shoulders back. Try not to fall into this motion. And hold, same thing with the hand. If you get comfortable, let some fingers off. But keep focusing on your non-moving point the entire time. Whether that's a light switch, windowsill, a button on a chair, anything. 15 seconds, fight it out. Five, four, three, two, and drop it down. All right, shake out those legs and then spin. So up to you. You could either spin, go to the opposite side, or you can move your chair. Whatever you need to do to, in order to see me and complete your motions. Now it's a little bend in your right knee. Right foot is straight. Now, same thing as before. We're bending left heel to butt. Make sure you do not round or arch during the sequence. It's breathe out and kick, toes up. Breathe in and bend to make sure those knees go at least parallel. Breathe out. You want to make sure you're not doing this having the knee forwards. So the knee is only forwards when you kick, but then when you bend it, they are parallel. Breathing out and in. Focus on your non-moving point. Chest up, abs tight, and using that chair as little or as much as you need. Remember, if you're a statue, and you're gripping with the whole hand, then let some fingers off. Maybe just rest the thumb on it. Anything to challenge yourself, but staying safe. We have about 15 seconds. The slower the kick, the better. Five, four, three, two, and step on out. Shake out that right leg. And then same balances like we did on the other side. So a little bend in your right knee, chest up, left leg out straight. Make sure you're not rounding. Keep chest up, shoulders back, left toes are up. Squeeze the butt, belly button in. Chest up, shoulders back, and focus. Using that chair as little or as much as you need. And just keep balancing. Challenge yourself, so take some fingers off if you need. 12 seconds. Three, two, and drop it down. Shake it out. Now, one more time. Remember, if you get a cramp in that hamstring, just stop, extend it out, pivot forward at the hip, stretch it for a few seconds, and then come back in. That'll alleviate it if you get that. Right leg straight, a little bend in that right knee. Left leg bends, heel to butt. Knees are parallel. And squeeze the butt, belly button in, chest up, and focus. Same thing with that chair. Twenty seconds, hang in there, make sure to keep concentrating. If you let your concentration move around a little bit, you are going to get messed up. So just focus on that single area. Ten seconds. Three, two, 
and drop it on down. All right, nice work there. Shake it out and come back into your chair, but same rules as before. Don't just come down and sit down, grab that chair. You wanna come to the front of it, toes straight, feet flat, chest up, then look back at that chair. Make sure it's still right there and decel down into it nice and safely. So now from there, let's get these hips nice and stretched after that balance work. Right ankle on left knee. From there, just like we did before, right knee gets pulled right across body to left armpit. And hold, you're gonna get a nice stretch in your right leg or right hip. Make sure you're not rounding into it like so. Keep chest up, shoulders back, and just hold your stretching at mild discomfort or slightly past it. That's it. And keep breathing. Five, four, three, two. Now slowly come off, but don't let the ankle off yet. Now from there, come up on your left hippy toe. Just coming up on your left hippy toe may give a nice stretch in this right leg. If it does, hold it. If you need more, use your hand, forearm, or elbow to put pressure down on that right inner knee. Just don't lean into it like this. Chest up, shoulders back, push down, hold that mild discomfort around that right leg, right hip, and breathe fluidly. Ten seconds. Three, two, and slowly come on out. Now switch sides for me. Left ankle on right knee. And when you get there, take that left knee and hug it right across body towards right armpit. Getting a nice stretch in that left hip or left leg. Make sure you're not rounded in. Chest up, shoulders back and hold that mild discomfort, breathe, and relax that leg. Don't fight against any of your stretching. Four, three, two, and slowly release, but keep that ankle up there. And then now same thing on the side, come up on your right tippy toe, keep chest up, shoulders back. If that gives you a nice stretch in that left leg, hold it. If you need more, push down with the hand, forearm, or elbow on that inner knee, but make sure you're not rounding into it. Keep yourself up tall and back. Push down, hold at that mild discomfort, breathe and hang out, just relax. Ten seconds. Three, two, and slowly come on out. Bring that left leg down. Now what I'd like you to do from here is scoot to the right side of your chair. Now I'll show you from the front and the side view. So right side of your chair, just make sure you're stable. You're not gonna flip that chair, that's key. Bring that right leg back, dip that right knee down. We're looking for a stretch right in the front of your right thigh. So from the side view, you look just like this. Now chest up tall, dip that knee down and hold. The more you dip the knee down, draw the leg back, or pivot backwards from your hips. You are not arching back like this. So use that belly button really and lean back from the belly button and hold. Nice mild discomfort stretch in the front of that right thigh. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Holding that mild discomfort. Four, three, two, and slowly come on out. So then slide to the left side of your chair. Same thing, make sure you're stable. You don't want to be so far over that you can flip the chair. 
Bring that left leg back, dip that left knee down, sit up nice and tall. So from the side view, you look just like this. And hold, dipping that knee down more, drawing the leg back more, or pivoting backwards at the hips more in order to get a better stretch. And just breathe, but only holding at mild discomfort. Make sure you're not leaning back and arching that lower back. Ten seconds. Three, two, slowly come on out. And then now from there, toes straight, feet flat, chest up, breathe out, stand up. And very nice work, everybody. So thank you for taking Thai Yoba today. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the class and you are interested in any live classes, I do run weekly live classes on Zoom. You can email me at camsconditioning at gmail.com. See y'all next time. Bye.